Um, hi everyone, very happy to be here and um, let's get things rolling uh, about WALKLAP. Um, so just give me one moment, I will share my screen with you. Please could you let me know when you can see my screen? We can see it, thank you Joella. Fantastic. So like Lauren uh, told you, today we're going to talk about WALKLAP. Um, and like they said, my name is Joella and I'm your WALKLAP person, um, your, WALKLAP in, your WALKLAP contact person. Um, and today we're going to be talking about WALKLAP. Now, first of all, we're going to be taking a step back to understand what is WALKLAP? What is it? It's a student engagement tool. It's a student engagement tool and so much so that it's a pedagogical tool that was based on neuropedagogical studies. Studies, so, oops, sorry, studies such as the theory of the four pillars of Stanislas Dane. And this theory, what does it say? It says that there are four magic ingredients in a way to provide an efficient learning process. You need to retain the student's attention. You need to promote the learner's active engagement. You need to provide the learner's feedback on whether the information they produced is correct or incorrect. And the learners need to consolidate the information they're learning. They need to revise. And what WALKLAP does is that it comes and focuses on the first two elements that are promoting students' attention, sorry, and generating their engagement, their active engagement. Having said that, you must be asking yourself, but how does WALKLAP do that? I mean, Quite frankly, when you use WALKLAP, how does it promote that engagement? It does so by promoting that engagement with, sorry, um, pedagogical continuity by ensuring that pedagogical continuity via interactive questionnaires that come and structure your course in little portions. Those questions come and just get the student's attention back on track. They enable you to encourage that participation, whether it be anonymous or authentified. And this can be done whether you are in a physical context, in a remote context, or in a hybrid, so both online and physical context. Now, how does it do so? Um, WALKLAP also enables you to favor the learning process. And it does so by allowing professors to comment results live, by measuring the student's level of understanding, and by enabling the professors to follow student engagement. Having said all that, this gives you a better idea of what WALKLAP is. So it really is a student engagement tool, a learning, a pedagogical tool. And now I think it's time for you to get your first WALKLAP experience. And here's for the, the, the drum roll, please. Um, please, can I ask you to take your phone and connect to the WALKLAP event? Now you can connect to a WALKLAP event either by scanning the QR code on the left side of the screen or by connecting to WALKLAP by using this link here. You insert this link into a tab, an internet tab. And you might notice at the bottom of the screen, there's the number four. What you can see at the bottom of the screen is the number of participants that are logging on to the event. Number five, five people are now connected and that number will just increase um, as we wait for everyone to connect. So just a reminder, there are two ways of connecting to a WALKLAP event. The first one by copying this link, inserting it into an internet tab on an internet connected device, whether it be a phone or a tablet, or by scanning the QR code um, on the left side of the screen. Um, Marianne or Lauren, I didn't see how many uh, connectees there were to the event. 
um, just so we know how many participants there are. Uh, there, there are 20 participants, oh, okay. Fantastic. This will give you a few extra moments to connect. And Mary Ann has added the link to the chat as well. So in, if you would like to go into the chat and copy it onto your um, onto your laptop, then you can connect that way as well. Fantastic. Just give you a few extra seconds um, to connect. 16 people were getting there. Fabulous. So there's now 18 people connected. Um, I think maybe we can move on to the first question. So brace yourselves. I would like to ask you how you are feeling today. Which one of these um, superheroes do you identify with the most today? Or which ones represent your emotional state in our rather? Um, so who's who? And you can see the results coming in live. One person is falling out the window. Uh, okay, you, some of you feel like you're, you're live. <laughs> okay, some of you are grumpy at the window. Others are a bit happier at the window. Some of you are slumped on the roof. Okay, um, that, that's quite a, oh, some of you are falling off a wall. That's not exactly very good, but... Um, there you go. So you can see the results coming in and I can see at the bottom of the screen that 15 out of the 19 people connected have answered. So there you go. This question is a find on image. So I asked you to find something on an image. Um, here it was pointing out whom you most identified with. So maybe now we can move on to the next question if that's okay with everybody. Uh, next question is, how do you feel about the start of the semester? The new semester starting next week for you guys and it's coming up with its, its own set of challenges. How are you feeling? Um, I take it a lot of you, okay, I'm up for the challenges. That's very positive. I feel anxious. That I think is most understandable, all the online challenges. Mm -hmm. So I see, I see a lot of you are feeling anxious, which I think in fairness is totally normal. Okie doke. Well, well, I think, I think you have a wonderful team that's supporting you there for the challenges. So fingers crossed uh, that will go well, or at least as well as can be with the dedicated support that you have. Fantastic. So maybe we can just move on to the next question to give you yet another idea of what you can do what it's like to experience wall clap as a student or as a learner next up is um, i'd like to get to know you better what do you teach or what do you do within ctu are you a maths professor are you a history professor um, are you not even a professor but you work with the silts department um, okay mathematics law subjects food oh food nice <laughs> uh, education jazz studies wow okay and so what you can see appear in front of your eyes is a word cloud and this word cloud changes as the results come in live. And you might notice that some words appear bigger than others. So mathematics and education seem to pop out bigger than others. That means that the answers maths and education were submitted more times than the other writers, than the other answers, sorry. Um, so I can see we've got quite a few profiles. I'm a writing consultant, admin school, um, stage Portuguese. Ah, oh, wow, okie doke, forensic medicine. Well, fantastic. I hope, I hope you better get a better glimpse of uh, the audience that we have. This is the point of a word cloud. It really gets, gives you that snapshot of what the audience is thinking. There you go. Does this give you a sufficient idea of what experiencing wall clap from a student's point of view is like? I'll exit the screen 
and now take you to the wall clap interface to give you an idea of what it's like to experience wall clap this time as the learner. So what you can see on my screen here is the wall clap interface. More specifically, on my screen, you can see the title of the event, SILT Webinar 2, the participation link, which I shared with you earlier on, the list of all the different types of questions you can create for your learners, and the list of questions you may have already created. What you can see below are the questions that I created for you that you answered just a few seconds ago. So how do you create a question? You click on the question, multiple choice, for example, and uh, just type your question. What is the capital of, uh, I don't know, England? Is it London or is it Cape Town? You select the correct answer and click on the save button down below. And the question appears at the bottom of the list. And once you've understood that, you've understood how to use Wall Club. Now, just to give you a quick tour of the different types of questions you can create. So multiple choice questions, which we just did, Polling questions um, is to really get a feel of what the opinion is thinking. Finding an image, same thing. You get the students to find something on an image. Rating questions. Open questions and word cloud questions have the same aim, is that to give, to liberate the, the, the speech for the students, except that the word clouds really enable the students to just jot down word clouds whereas open questions will allow them to submit longer answers. Um, if we flip through a few more questions, finding a number proves very efficient in history, for example, matching questions, the typical use case would be associating a city to a country um, or a capital to its country. Um, just to say a few words on prioritizing and sorting, um, these two questions, uh, the aim of these two questions is ask the student to give an order of a certain process. The prioritization is asking the student for their opinion. What order do you think these, set, these different steps should be arranged in? Whereas the sorting question is really one um, certain order and that's it. And just to take you a couple through a couple more questions, filling in the blanks, um, slides to share information, brainstorming questions um, enable you to create categories and really simulate that um, uh, the, the post-it, uh, sticking the post-its in the different categories, um, audio video components. Um, so there you go. Does this give you a feel for the diversity of questions you have in Walk Lab. Do we have any questions at this point um, that anyone would like to ask, Joella or myself? Because there's something in the chat. How do you say the results of your question on your slides? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's it. In the future question, keep a hold of that question and we'll get back to it just in a few moments. Thank you. Um, could you, uh, to Ella, could you quickly say the brainstorming um, question for uh, Richard who asked in the chat? Okie doke. So we're going to click on the brainstorming question and uh, let's create um, uh, a question. What tools do you use at CTU for? say, uh, internal communicate, communication for uh, data storage, oops, um, and for um, student interface, let's say. So these are the three different categories I've created. We're going to save that question. And to show you the question, we're going to launch it by clicking on start. 
So there you can see the three different categories. What tools do you use at CTU for internal communication? That if you go back on your phone, you will have the question that you'll be able to answer. And you'll be able to submit the responses in different categories. So one person has written email for internal communication. Another person has just submitted Slack, fantastic, Microsoft Teams. And then on your phone, you'll notice that you have, you can select the category you'll be answering in. So for data storage, um, you can write your answers coming in. Um, and that would be maybe um, someone just wrote Google Drive, fantastic. And as a professor who is sharing the screen, I can comment, but I can also switch the answers from category. So this really gives you the possibility of commenting the results live and generating that interaction. Does it answer the question better? Um, I just want to point out that what we are doing now using WooClap is we are using it in a synchronous um, live method. And we will go into using it asynchronously um, in, a, in a few moments. Fantastic. Okay. Um, and then we also have a question about um, seeing the ordering question. And Marie, do you mean, um, is that the sorting one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you would like us to create a sorting question, is that it? Yes, please. Um, Okie doke. So let's create a uh, sorting question. Um, what should we ask? Um, we are putting you on the spot here. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm not very inspired. <laughs> <laughs> what is the... Uh, uh, we, we usually use it in technology of step-by-step -step guide of how to, you, to implement the technology. So, um, yeah. A technology... Um, and so you might have, uh, first of all, benchmarking, um, selection, um, testing, Im uh, oops, implementation. Uh, and let's add one last thing, which would be uh, testing if it's change management. Oh, change management, you said? Um, Joella, just one quick question about the sorting question. Does it? Oh, that's the correct order. Okay, so it will be jumbled in the question. Exactly. Okay. So save that. Scroll all the way down the bottom and launch the question so that you can answer it from your interface. And what you can see here on your phone is the list of uh, possibilities and arrows to move those possibilities up or down. So there you go, the answers are slowly coming in six out of 20, eight out of 20. And what's interesting with this type of question, which we didn't necessarily touch base on the, for the other questions, is that here we can show the correct answer because there is a defined correct answer. So give you a few more seconds to answer and then we'll show the correct order, the correct response. There you go. Because um, we have to then pass on the ball to Lauren, can I show the correct answer? I think so, yeah. Um, there you go. So here, when I clicked on correct answer, it froze the voting possibilities and showed you the correct combination. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Zoila.
can I um, just one last thing to touch base on, which was very important, is the fact that WooClap really does integrate with um, your digital ecosystem. So you can use it fully with presentation software uh, within your LMS, so within Sakai, Eula. It works with video conferencing tools such as Microsoft Teams, um, and it really is just compatible with that environment you have. So there you go, Lauren, I'm passing it on to you. Uh, stop sharing my screen, there you go. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Sayla. Um, okay, everyone, so it's over to Mary Ann and myself now. Let me get my screen. Lauren, can I share my screen or do you want to? Uh, um, I can share it. Okay, sure. Cool. Go ahead. Okay, is that up? Yeah, it's up. Okay. Um, get into percent. Okay, Mary, and you you are starting, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the pilot phase of WooClap. So we are currently running WooClap as a pilot tool in semester one of 2021. Uh, running from March to August. And the continued use of WooClap depends on your feedback. So we're hoping to get some feedback both from lecturers and from students about how they found the use of the tool and how effective it was in your courses, etc. cetera. Um, so don't be surprised if we come knocking at your door to ask you for some feedback if you do use the tool. Um, as Joella showed you, WooClap can be used both as a, a synchronous tool and an asynchronous tool. The synchronous mode in WooClap is called the voting mode and the asynchronous mode is the participant pace. And what you would have just experienced is the synchronous or voting mode. Uh, and in a moment, as Lauren mentioned, we're going to be showing you what the asynchronous mode can look like in, in your Vula course. A couple of things to remember is that WooClap is a tool that was designed for engagement as opposed to a tool that's designed for assessment. So if you are wanting to do more rigorous or more formal assessments, I would encourage you to use the native tools in Vula. So use tests and quizzes rather than WooClap, but for engagement, it, it really is a great tool. It also is an external app, WooClap is that is, WooClap's an external app. And that means that it's not zero rated. Um, in theory, students should be back in residences. They should have an allocation of data that was given, that was provided by the university. Um, but I would also just check with your students to make sure that you're not excluding anyone by using non-zero rated apps. And then just lastly, on, on the pilot phase, if you are wanting to use WooClap in your course, then we do invite you to make use of um, the one-on-one -on -one consultations that we offer if you'd like some help with that. Lauren, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so as Joella mentioned, WooClap does integrate with Vula as well. It integrates with the Vula gradebook. There are a number of questions, seven question types that are gradable in, in WooClap. And all those questions um, can feed into the gradebook. So those are MCQs, find an image or hotspot questions as you may know them. Find a number, sorting, the one that we just um, did, the sorting question. There's an open question or word cloud question, the matching questions and fill in the blanks. Those are all integratable with the grade, the Vula grade book. Next question, please, Lauren. Oh, next slide, sorry. Okay, so in order to get started with WooClap, um, you'd need to set it up in your Vula site as well as create an event. So, um, in order to set up WooClap in your Vula site, you can follow those steps. It's, it's quite simple, site setup. Go to the site setup tab, manage tools, external tools, add WooClap and click continue and finish. 
And once you've done that, you want to register using this link. There is, you can register on WooClap um, without this link, but it's going to be a lot easier for consolidating things to register with this specific link that's for um, UCT. Um, so Lauren, I don't know, do you actually let me pop it into the chat quickly? Um, yes, please do, Mary. I'm, I'm, I think people are following these steps as we speak, so it would be helpful if they can have that link. Thank you. There you go. It's in the chat. Um, great. Then once you have registered and set it up in your ruler site, you can create an event and there are two options. Either you can create an event on the WooClap app directly and that will be available to you in your Vula site, or you can do this via Vula. And to do it via Vula, you, on, if you're on a lessons page, those are the steps to follow. Just add content, add external tool, WooClap, you type in the title of the tool, so whatever you want students to see as a link and then save that and that will be saved directly in your lessons page. And we'll show you what that looks like in a moment in Vula. Can we go to the next slide, please, Lauren? Okay, so this, so as um, what you would have seen was the voting mode, the, 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 what Joella, what we experience now um, in Joella's presentation was the voting mode in WooClap. This is the participant pace mode and the participant pace mode, um, students answer questions and whatever type of questions they answer questions, click next, submit, answer question, click next and submit. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, please Lauren, what they will see is their results. So you'll see a summary of the results. Grade is one out of two. You'll see the correct answer as you, um, as you click through the questions. So the big difference between the participant pace and the voting mode in, in, in WooClap is that in the vote in the participant pace, sorry, which is the which is the mode that I think most of us will use uh, if we're doing asynchronous teaching, doesn't show uh, the the um, the class results. So if you remember what Joella, what we saw on Joella's screen when she was sharing the screen in the live mode, you get to see, or all students get to see, um, they have an opportunity to submit an answer and then see everybody's results. In the participant pace, we don't really see that. And with some of the question types, you really do want to see that. Like for example, the word cloud. Um, the word cloud is really nice for students to see everybody's results. If we can go to the next slide, please, Lauren. So we just wanted to show you a little bit about a little bit of how you can sort of mimic that feeling in your Vula site. Um, one way of doing it, I'm just going to demonstrate or show one way is to have the question in your Vula site. Um, and that's what it looks like. Um, there's a link there that you that students will click. And when they do that, next slide, please, Lauren they'll see exactly what you saw in the in the um, the voting mode. So that's the question. They'll click on the question, go next, sorry, Lauren, you can click through this quite quickly. Click on the question, submit, and they'll see the next slide, which is their own answer. Um, and you'll see there the question is, where in the world are you from? And you might want students to see where everyone in their class is from, but in the participant pace mode, only you as the person creating the question will be able to see that. So if you click on the next slide, please, Lauren, that's just the mobile view. Um, what we've done there is to, after the question has been answered, you can take a screenshot of that, of that um, WooClap question. So, they, so the WooClap question, yes not event, um, and you can embed that in your Vula site. And what we've done there is to use it as a discussion prompt. But Lauren has got a few more creative ways that you can use the participant pace mode in Vula, and she's going to be sharing that um, next. So I'm going to hand over to you, Lauren. Thanks. Great. 
Thank you, Mary Ann. Um, I want to pause and ask if there are any questions about um, using work club so far on Villa or setting it up, um, anything that we can respond to. Hi there, um, Lauren uh, yes. and thank you for this. I uh, just want to know if we have WooClap uh, visible to the students, can they create their own WooClaps or will they will there be a student view for them? It will be a student view for them. So there are different views. Um, you have the, the um, presenter view and they will have the student view. Like what you had when Joella did um, the WooClap questions with us. That is what the students will see as well. Does would it be that... best then to uh, make it invisible and we can just use the links uh, aside from it? Or do you think it's okay that they can access it on Vula? Do you mean if it's embedded on Vula? Uh, yes, like for instance, I can have Zoom um, and I can I can have Zoom as a embedded in Zoom uh, uh, on uh... Vula. On the but I can make it invisible and I can still use the links and share it with yeah. them. But they won't see the tab on the left because they get quite anxious wow. when they see a lot of tabs. Exactly. Yeah. You can hide that tab that says WooClap. That can be hidden yeah. from students. Exactly. Yes. So where my arrow is at the moment, this WooClap um, tab or page on the left-hand pane, that can be hidden. Yes, thank you for that, Anne-Marie. That's a good question. Okay, let's move on then. Um, so I have three examples that I want to talk through um, as examples of, examples of how to use WooClap in combination with the Vila tools in, in an asynchronous method or participant pace. Um, so one way is to use it um, in combination with the Vila comments tool. So in this example, I used the WooClap find on image question type, um, and I combined it with the comments tool. So students would go through the questions, um, pick the area that that's, that's correct, submit it, and then um, they will see their results. And, and then you can add a prompt below the question just to um, give students an opportunity to, to say something about that experience of the question, or you can take the question that they had to answer a bit further into more depth um, into the comments below that. And then the second example is using a um, fill in the blanks question on WooClap and combine it with a discussion forum question. Um, so that this, um, in the fill in the blank, students would um, see the whole sentence or paragraph with all of the missing words. And they would go ahead and um, enter the words and then submit. Um, and then they will get the results afterwards. And then below that, you can add a prompt for students to go into the discussion forum um, and you can, in the, in the forum, you can provide the correct paragraph and then ask them to discuss, to discuss it further. So this is an example of um, what you would see if you go into the forum. Um, it's the, the case study with the correct answer and also a bit, a bit of further explanation of that case. And then students can click reply in the forum and continue on with the conversation in there. And the third example is using, um, this is a sorting question like we did before. Um, so it's a scenario and then students are asked to sort um, what the most likely um, cause of this um, situation would have been. And then I also added a Vila full text answer question. And I made it a required item so that students have to answer that full text um, question before they can see the, the explanation of the correct answer. So I'm just going to click through what it would look like. Um, so students would be sorting the different courses of the, the case. Um, and then they would get the correct answer or the, the correct um, order and then motivate 
their answer in the short text item below that. And once they have submitted that, they will be able to see the correct ranking and the correct explanation. Okay, so this is an, just another example of using WooClap in combination with the Vela tools um, to add some interesting interactivity into your, um, your course. Okay, so that's the end for my part of this um, presentation. I'm going to add, um, no, I'm going to hand over to Zoella. And um, this is a very quick look at three examples. Do we have any questions at this point um, that you were wondering about while I present? Okay, if you do come up with any questions, please pop it into the chat and we will get back to you on there. And I'm going to hand back over to Joella now. Now in the, the, the 20 minutes, the last 20 minutes or so that we have, we're just going to um, find out how to use WooClap at its upper best. So how do you optimize your use of WooClap? First of all, you might notice on the top right of my screen, there is a little wheel of settings. Now, what we're going to do here is click on this wheel of settings and scroll down to explore the different possibilities that we have. First of all, you'll notice there is an authentication button. This authentication button requires, when you activate this button, it means that you require that your audience logs in either via an email address or a social media login or via the university login, but you're asking your audience to identify themselves. Earlier on when we participated, we didn't actually um, know who was participating. We were all participating in an anonymous mode. But as a lecturer, you might want to know, well, who's answered, who submitted what answer? And you can combine this authentication option with result export options. The first way of exporting results, and here I'm gonna bounce back on the question that was asked um, earlier on, how do we export results? There are three possibilities of exporting results. The first possibility is exporting results via Excel. So in an Excel sheet, you'll have one column with your questions, one column with your answers, one column with your correct answers, etc. The second view is the grid view. Now the grid view gives you a very detailed vision of what every student's answer to every question. Let's take a look at it. So I'm gonna click on grid and you'll be able to see what every, or every member of the audience answers every single question. Lauren Butler answered question one, Question two, she answered zero. Ruan Muhlman feels anxious because of foreseeable challenges and is a professor of maths and maths education. So you really see a very detailed view of what everyone answered to every question. Now, this grid view differs from the last view, which is the report, which gives you a more general view, a more global view of what everyone answered to every question. So here I get a snapshot of what the whole audience answered. Same thing on question two, I just get this global view of what everyone submitted to every question. Is it clear? Um, am I, is it, do you have any questions to this point regarding result exports? Uh, yeah, uh, and it looks like Anne-Marie's got a question, um, Joella, uh, and her question is, students are often cautious about other students seeing their response and thus won't sign up. Can, can it be set up that only the presenter can see it? And the answer is yes, only the presenter can see it until you, so students are able to see, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Joella, students are able to see the global view through your screen. In other words, they'll be able to see that um, in general, five out of 10 students answered this question or um, three out of 10 answered the, another answer, um, but they won't be able to see that Anne-Marie answered this and Joella answered this and Lauren answered that. Um, 
you are able to see that in your view. And the screen that Joella is sharing is um, a is like a, a lecturer's view of WooClap. So the lecturer can either export the results directly in WooClap, or if you choose to sync with the gradebook, you'll be able to see that in gradebook. But just like everyone um, in gradebook, everyone is only able to see their own grades and you're able to see everyone's grades. That's sort of the same principle there. And Marie, does that answer your question? Oh, yes, I see. Okay, <laughs> great. Awesome. Yes, thank you. I had a guest lecturer doing WooClap before and I wanted to, to implement myself, but then I saw some of the students were abstaining from the exercise because we didn't clarify that they won't be uh, identified. So, um, Sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead Miriam. Um, I just wanted to mention on the authentication, since we were talking about authentication, on the authentication note, um, when students, so in the WooClap app, you can require authentication. Uh, and that means that even if students don't access the questions through Vula, they will need to authenticate, in other words, identify themselves. Um, through Vula, however, you don't need to, you don't need to set authentication because by virtue of logging in through the LTI, so if your question is embedded in Vula, then students will, it will record that um, Lauren Butler, um, Lauren Butler got this grade for this question, that grade for another question. So this authentication applies mainly to the app mode. But it will still only be visible to you as the um, lecturer. Students won't see each other's um, responses. Okay, then we have a question about integrating WooClap with Teams and Moodle. That's a good question. So WooClap does indeed integrate with Microsoft Teams uh, with Moodle. Um, would you like me to demo the integration with Teams or what exactly is your, is your question? Katharina, could you unmute and ex explain a little bit about what it is that you would like to see? Uh, uh, teams, because I think it would be applicable to everybody. But if you could also please, maybe at the end, um, who's not interested, if you could please let me know about Moodle as well. Uh, Kathleen, can I just clarify, are you um, from GSB? No, I'm actually on Invat. I'm actually from DUT, the Durban okay. University of okay. Technology. That's okay. why I, I, I don't use Vula, we use Moodle. But um, UCT has kindly invited us that we are able to listen um, on these sessions. So I don't want to interfere with what UCT is doing, but if you wouldn't mind just doing a little add on at the end. Sure, thank you for clarifying. Okie doke, so regarding Moodle, I wouldn't be able to demo it at the end, but if it's okay with you, I'll just touch a few words on it. And um, maybe uh, what well, we can go into further detail by email, I'll be able to send you uh, a few, well, a bit more, a bit more resources about that. Is that okay? So um, your, what you can see is my Microsoft Teams account uh, from when I was uh, back in school. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is create um, a team uh, specifically for this webinar. Um, I can't. So we're going to create a team for this second webinar and we're going to call this team Silt number two. And then we're going to insert WooClap into this team. So there you go. I'm on my team. And what we're going to do here is click on the extra three buttons right at the bottom of the screen. In doing so, you're going to call WooClap into Microsoft Teams. So we're going to click on this button, type WooClap, and click on WooClap when it comes up. And here we're going to choose to add WooClap to a team, hence why I created a team specifically for this. So we're going to set up a tab, so set up WooClap into this team. 
And this is going to bring us, um, just like on the interface, creating an event from step one. So here I'm going to create a new event called uh, Silt Demo 2. Click on the Save button down below. And what will appear on my screen is the Walk Lab interface pasted in within Microsoft Teams. So there you can see this is the Walk Lab interface when within Microsoft Teams. And what's interesting is that there are two ways of using Walk Lab in Microsoft Teams. Either like I've just demoed by inserting Walk Lab within a Microsoft Teams Teams. That way the professor and the lecturers directly have access to it from within the team. Or you can choose to use Walk Lab by sharing your screen via Microsoft Teams. If you don't wish to embed it within a team, and you just want to share a PowerPoint that already has a Microsoft that already has WooClap questions embedded in it, that is entirely possible. Does this answer your question a bit better? Yes, thank you very much. Because um, it'll open up because I was wondering about our coil projects that we do with um, our international partners, and one of the issues was student engagement. So this is a good way of maybe get involving the students this way. Thank you very much. Um, so, Ella, so well, after I'm um, creating the question here um, in, in the work lab in Teams, um, and let's say this is a class group, there are lots of students added as well. Do they see the lecturer view as well, or do they see the student view? They will see uh, the student view. So, when you click on posts, they will be able to uh, click on the WooClap link, which will be okay. the participant link, and that link will link them to their student view to answer the question. Okay. And so they won't be able to access the tab at the top? Uh, no, because that will be my tab, my professor's view. And I think in the chat, we, uh, we also have a sort guide to using WooClap that we will send around as soon as it's ready. Um, and as Mary Ann said at the beginning, we are available for consultations um, for if you would like to start using it, um, we are here to assist you uh, as you get going. But um, I think our best advice would be to play around and start creating questions, play around in it and see what it feels like using it. Um, we have a question about, did you see that, Zoela? Yeah, I just saw that. That's why I'm sharing my screen again. Okay. Um, so just jumping on your question, uh, what is the add presentation button? So earlier on, we mentioned that WooClap can be used within PowerPoint or conversely embed WooClap questions uh, within a presentation. So when I click on this button, it's going to enable me to upload a presentation within WooClap. And then I'm going to be able to add the questions that I have created into my PowerPoint. Um, oops, just give me one second while I embed a PowerPoint presentation um, coming up. There you go. So I'm just going to be, I'm just uploading a presentation. So back on my screen, my presentation is uploading. And when I'm working from directly from the platform, you will see a button appeared, this insert questions button. When I click on insert questions, I am able to drag and drop the questions that I've already created into the PowerPoint, the PDF presentation. So what we're going to do is select a question, drag it and drop it. Repeat the operation. We're going to select the questions that we have on the right hand side of the screen, drag it and drop it. And these questions can be embedded at any place within the presentation. 
And that's really how you can just embed all the different types of questions within your, your presentation to structure your presentation in little sections of maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes to just get the attention back on track. And obviously when you've done that, um, always save your work by clicking on the save button. So that's what the add a presentation enables you to do. You add your presentation and embed questions within it. And that would be for, for a live lecture, for a synchronized um, lecture. Absolutely. Okie doke. Um, so the I'm confused button will be particularly efficient in a remote context, so in an online context. So when you're teaching WALKLAP from a distance, you might want your students to be able to express their confusion. So in the wheel of settings, we're going to click here, scroll down and activate the I'm confused button. What this means is that on your participant interface, so from your phone or from your, your, your computer or your laptop, you will now have, after refreshing the page, a, um, oops, so the authentication is activated. Uh, you will now have a, an option, a button at the top of the screen, which says, I'm confused. And you can choose whether to um, activate I'm confused or not. The I'm confused button really just gives you, the, the students, the possibility to express their confusion. So just to show you what it looks like um, on the presentation mode, one student is confused here. Two students are confused. And I, as the lecturer, can reset that number to zero after having explained whether, well, re-explained the, 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 the question. There you go. And just to touch a few words on the message tab. Um, so the message tab comes as a complement of the I'm confused button. You might want your students to be able to ask questions or to add extra um, elements or be able to share uh, their experiences. When you click on activate the wall, you're activating the message wall. What does that mean? You're creating a chat option for the students to ask their questions. That means on your interface as a, as a learner, you will have a little green message icon at the bottom of your screen. Perfect. Um... Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of this webinar. Um, so Ella, thank you so much for joining us um, and helping out in the chat and getting people to um, see how awesome Work Club is. Um, as I said, Mary Ann and myself are here to help as you start using this tool and um, we will send around some resources that you can uh, look at um, in your own time. Um, okay, but that's it for today. So good luck, everyone, and um, have fun.